Penn's Late News with Jessica Rowe. Tonight, elite troops head off to the Middle East. Victoria's firefighters facing a tough weekend as temperatures soar into the 40s. And Christopher Reeves' plea for stem cell research. Good evening. Also tonight, what the war threat is doing to the cost of petrol. Australia's country music festival goes global. And the mysterious theft of a handgun from Kerry Packer's office. Also tonight, a shopkeeper turns the tables on three bungling bandits. And a stunning discovery of four-winged, feathered dinosaur fossil. But first, our special forces are on their way to the Middle East. The elite soldiers farewelled today as the federal government stood firm amid public division over Australia taking part in the war effort. A traditional formal farewell for our vanguard troops. Will be supported to the utmost fibre of our beings and will be brought home as quickly as we possibly can manage. An assignment regarded as inherently dangerous. Obviously a mission, a mission to the, the Middle East um, region, even, even as a pre-deployment, uh, has certain risks uh, attached to it. No pretense either that this pre-deployment has bipartisan support. This deployment has become a political issue. But what will not be a political issue is our support for you. Public opinion remains sceptical about John Howard's decision to put Australia on a war footing with Iraq. He got a taste of it on Melbourne radio this morning. In World War II, Australian soldiers died defending this country. What are they dying defending in Iraq? Despite the obvious public reservations about this step and the possible political consequences, John Howard's convinced he's doing what's in the nation's interests. If the world allows itself to be intimidated out of action by a rogue state like Iraq but other countries uh, with equally bad track records will be encouraged to copy Iraq. His own party is divided on it and yet he's had a telephone call with George Bush and he sent the troops. Certainly the White House is grateful for Australia's solidarity. Uh, the President would like to thank the people and the government of Australia for their efforts and working to achieve peace. Greg Turnbull, 10 News. A mother is risking her life acting as a human shield in Iraq in a desperate effort to prevent war. Ruth Russell plans to join an international peace convoy to Iraq as part of a mass anti-war protest. Despite the risks, international peace groups want civilians to act as human shields to prevent military strikes at hospitals, schools and likely targets. I wouldn't have a conscience to be able to just stay here and say, well, I could have done more, but I didn't. So that's just me. I suppose I always go to the edge, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty scary. Victoria's firefighters are bracing for a horror weekend. Temperatures for most regions are heading towards the 40s. A statewide fire ban now in force. Thickening smoke signals a menacing fire behind the hills surrounding Omeo. In between the town and the fire front, a forestry plantation that could fuel a fireball, fanned by an approaching northerly wind. It's extremely scary. It's very nerve-wracking and people are very tense. Hospital patients have been evacuated and some people are fleeing. Those residents staying are on high alert, preparing their homes for the worst. Their concerns follow another night of vigilant backburning, this time in the Stanley Forest near Yakandanda. They may be exhausted, but fire crews know this is a crucial window of opportunity. Any fuel left behind in this bushland will no doubt come back to bite them, as temperatures soar over the weekend. We're going pretty well flat out now, trying to consolidate the lines um, so we can uh, protect uh, uh, the community from any uh, slopovers from uh, the fires we've got now running. Calm conditions lasted throughout the day, giving crews a chance to patrol and clear fire breaks. The, the calm weather's uh, really helped us a lot and um, we're really aiming for uh, tonight or tomorrow morning at the latest uh, to really stitch up the fires. To intensify the fight, Australia is to lease two more aerial water bombers from the US. The Prime Minister and Premier Steve Brax delivering the welcome news during a tour of fire communications headquarters. They'll be on their way 
If they're not already on their way and they'll be in operation uh, uh, within a matter of days. But the crisis will interrupt the beginning of the school year with 25 northeastern schools to remain closed until the threat passes. Either those schools are being used as command posts to fight the fires and for relief efforts for the firefighters or the transportation of students is unsafe. 260,000 hectares of national parks has already been burnt out. But with a total fire ban declared across Victoria tomorrow, Authorities fear the fires could soon merge with another blaze that stretches into New South Wales. Nicole Strawn, 10 News. And 10 reporter Max Futcher is in one of Victoria's fire hotspots, the northeast town of Bright. Now, Max, it's already been a terrible week for Bright residents, but there are blistering conditions forecast for the weekend. Yes, that's right. I can tell you, Jessica, that it's a rather eerie evening in Bright, uh, and not just because of the thick smoke, which really is just filling the streets of the town. Many here are nervous and have their fingers crossed, uh, as, as you say, tomorrow, the first of two hellishly hot days hits. Saturday and Sunday are expected to get up to 40 degrees. Tomorrow we'll have moderate uh, dry northerly winds and perhaps they'll get even stronger on Sunday. It's not good news for anyone in the Alpine region. Uh, the towns of Beechworth, Myrtleford, Stanley, Yakandanda and uh, El Dorado. Um, now tonight to 